What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. It's just Sai Hi. I want to say thank you guys for the love on the last video. I really appreciate you guys. Um, really humbled. Um, yeah, just want to start there. Um, so I actually filmed this video last week and I really wanted to kind of like refilm it. But you know what? You know what's crazy, guys? I I'm so tired. Like I've, I've, um, I've, I've transparently had like maybe just what feels like a life shift that happened this week. Um, and so like, I'm, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to rest, but the video was raw and authentic and I kind of want to keep it that way. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to cut straight to that video. I look pretty much the same. I, it's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, be enjoy the video. But I have some few notes because my mind goes crazy. So I've tried to uh, put some thoughts together for, for, for this video. And, and, and really, I want to kind of share with you guys, I think what's really helped me, what I've learned and actually why I actually, you know, took time away. And of course, if you haven't seen the deeper kind of length and explanation of this, then check out the video linked above me somewhere. Quick background, right? I've been creating since 2016. It's been a long while. I turned 27 this year, 2024. And um, it's been a while since I've been creating. And very quickly, I rose to a, a place of super hyper visibility. And I learned the hard way about losing some of the most precious things that we find in anonymity. You know, the ability to walk somewhere and be unknown, the joys of that. And I've sort of found over the last few years that I've been rediscovering what that really means. And I've been learning, really, um, what, what, what such a blessing that was. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's been a deep exploration in my life. And so um, before I get into my journey a little bit, I guess the question to us is why do people crave anonymity? Well, I think it's pretty simple. And I think the greatest thing that I've learned right now in my life um, is that anonymity affords you a lot of things. I think there's a curse and a gift to everything, right? Whenever you get something that is amazing, there is two sides to it. There's the beauty to it, there's the opportunities that it gives you, but there's also the responsibility and the pain that it gives you. I think there's always that duality to life. There's this tension that we hold whenever we get something good. And so in my, in my case, I got many opportunities by being exposed to hundreds of thousands of people on the internet. And it gave me a life that I couldn't even imagine living. But what was the cost? Well, the cost was privacy. It was changing dynamics of relationships, the inability to sustain relationships because of the, the loss of being able to introduce myself to people authentically. And so I, I would have to live this life navigating people's expectations of me. And oftentimes I'm robbed of the ability to say, hey, my name is. For me, when I reflect on that, I think that was one of the most painful things that I, I grieved, right? Losing this ability to like make mistakes and I guess have a do-over without having to explain myself. I think anonymity is a lesson that we have, right? Um, the fact that we're not known on the world stage affords us the ability to make multiple mistakes, mistakes that otherwise would cost us way more. We get to make and we get to just move on. We get to correct our mistakes, our errors. We get to learn about our behaviors. And then we just get to reintroduce ourselves to people as a better version of who we were. And I feel like I lost that. And that was quite painful. You know, people often ask me this question, if I could go back and do something different, what would I do? Well, I, I would probably find a way to impact people's lives, help people at scale um, and do it without my private life being on scrutiny. Um, you know, like, you know, I, I, I in no way have experienced the, the level of celebrity that some people have. But in many ways, I experienced the level of attention that generally changes a person's life. You know, if you look at someone like Speed, Speed is young, he's had a lot of online success and he has literally, I used to see him in my apartment block when I lived in Manchester and he literally has two security guards with him all the time. Who's paying for that? Well, him. Uh, why? Because he has to protect himself. And these are the realities um, that people on the internet when they get to a certain level, have to begin to reconsider. And that's even even things like going to lunch and wanting to be able to just have time privately with somebody that you love without somebody looking at that and thinking, oh my God, is he dating that person? And these are things that I've dealt with in different levels, actually. You know, going out to, to dinner with someone that you just care about and it's literally a friend and you start to hear that, oh, you're like dating someone. It's, it, it's crazy. It's interesting. The internet is a wild, wild place. But these are some of the things that I think um, anonymous life affords you the ability to do to just make error, to explore, to be curious, to have fun, to date, to do those things. And of course, now we have, I guess, the social media personalities where we act like we don't care, but the damage is it's impossible to not care. And I'm never gonna sit here and tell you, oh, I don't care that this happened or this happened. No, that, that'd be a lie. I'll be compensating. The truth is I cared walking through a mall and people want to take pictures of you. People expect you to be happy all the time. So people crave. Uh, they crave anonymity or rather right, anonymity is a blessing because you control the narrative of your life to some degree 
um, in a much maybe better way than some of us who are positioned in front of your screens. Um, I think that's why people do it. But over the, over the years, I've learned so many important lessons. And in fact, I've been, I've been trying to make sense of myself uh, over the last few years as to why I struggled um, to make content again, as to why I ran away from social media, why I did what I did. I was trying to make sense of some of the behaviors that I had. And, and I think it, it boiled down to um, three things that I wanted to reclaim. I wanted to reclaim the ability to reintroduce myself to people. Uh, to be able to have the opportunity to to actually be who I am and to be known and fully known, to have joy in my life, genuine joy and opportunity, but then also to be able to do this with my friends. Those are three things that have been important to me. And I think when I look at the shifting paradigms in my mind with the also the intersection of faith being something that I so that became increasingly important to me. Um, I even got baptized last year um, again for the second time and faith has become increasingly important to me relationships have become increasingly important to me work has become increasingly important to me making money has become increasingly important to me how I make my money is important to me how I do what I do is important to me and as these things change as I grew older I had to start to begin to evaluate what's actually important and the the reality is I I came to this conclusion that what's most important to me is relationships and I think relationships community um, is the most vital important thing to me and a few of the things that I did, if you talk about how did I find joy um, or how did I rediscover joy in my life, in, in, in anonymous living? Well, it, it's three things. Number one, I spend a lot of time writing, journaling, learning who I really am. And that's exploring the dark tendencies that you would have in yourself, not running away from the fearful conversations, the, the, the rough conversations that you have in your mind. And, and asking yourself, like, who are you actually becoming? Who are you arriving as? Um, and it became more important to me to do that work than just to be on a screen. Uh, and it's mostly because when you live on the other side of pressure, social media or hyper visibility, you are accountable to people that you don't know, which isn't necessarily bad. It's an honor and it's leadership and that has to be stewarded well. But the risk is if the light inside of you is smaller than the light outside of you, then you're going to be destroyed. And what that means is if you don't know what you stand for and people then come and hate you, it's difficult and it's painful. Um, and so I, I went on this journey of trying to identify what's my meta narrative, what's, what's the thing, what's the purpose, what's my why, and what's the story, what's the one story that I want to continue telling and want to continue living for the rest of my life. And I think this is always going to change. But, but right now, I've been obsessed with this idea of becoming more, this idea of um, finding joy and anonymity, reclaiming back my story, um, and writing that and sharing that in the way that I see the world. Um, and being choiceful about who I share that with. Um, so I spend a lot of time journaling. So if you are looking for a way to find joy, then I would argue you have to spend more time reflecting on who you are, who you're becoming, who you're arriving at. Now, the second thing I did lots of is traveling. I think traveling reminds you that the world isn't so small. So in 2020, when I was being dragged on the internet, I remember feeling like the world was incredibly, incredibly small. I was fortunate enough to, to lead a book club in which there were people from over 15 different countries and there, uh, amazing women who I've journeyed with, amazing guys. And in the midst of like a very pressured time, I found myself deeply, deeply surrounded by the reality that there is more than this moment. It allowed me to have the bravery to lock my phone, put my phone down and tune into the lives that I'm invested in and remind myself that there's more out there. Uh, and so something that became important to me over time, as soon as I was able to really afford it, was traveling. And since then, I've done a lot of traveling. This year alone, I did a whole tour of Europe. I traveled um, through eight countries in Europe, about 18 different cities in 16 days, which is one of the most amazing experiences. It's just an amazing place. I don't even remember where I went to. It's, it's, it's just a crazy time. And, and um, you know, traveling has become... I think a, a really easy and simple way for me to find joy because it serves, I guess, two reasons. Um, and it's linked to the third reason, which is it helps me to have a, a good time to uh, discover myself in real time. So I'm, I'm observing who I'm arriving as because I'm interacting with different aspects of the world. I'm catching inspiration from different sites. I'm learning history. I remember being in Berlin, learning about the dark history of Berlin uh, stood on top of the, the car park that now sits above the bunker where Hitler um, actually lived his last few moments um, before taking his life with his wife. Um, and just like processing that this now ordinary place that seems unassuming 
would have been the, the, the place that somebody would have curated mass evil that has literally changed the fabric of history and has impacted people's lives. That blew my mind. And so finding joy for me has looked like exploring different stories, reminding yourself that the, that the story you live in isn't the only one. And what that means is if you are sad in the story that you find yourself, there's more and more affords you the opportunity to purchase a joy that you may otherwise not be able to find in your situation. And I found that through traveling. And then the second thing and the final thing, my three things that this traveling has allowed me to do is this nurture relationships. So right now I'm in Canada, I'm in Calgary, and I come to Canada quite often because I found a bunch of beautiful relationships out here, uh, people who are deeply invested in me and, and, and I in them. And, uh, I spend a lot of time now, if I talk about the kind of the greatest priority that I have um, within my work, and I would even argue as above work, I would say it's making sure that I live my life spending moments with people, whatever the cost. Uh, I think it's a continual reminder that there's more, that people love you. And once again, that the world is far bigger than whatever circumstance you find yourself. Uh, and so finding joy for me has looked like deeply immersed in myself in the things that I think I lacked as a child and coming from an immigrant family uh, where you spend years and years and years locked up making sure that you can actually even just get a permanent residence you'll be able to be afforded certain things um, I'm doing everything in my power to uh, rediscover all the parts of, of childhood that I lost Eighteen, nineteen to about 24, I feel like I was always waiting for people to come along with me to do the adventures I wanted to do. And then I remember just realizing, oh my God, I'm not just going to keep waiting for people to join me on things that I see to be vital. I'm going to go on that adventure and discover them myself. And because you know, becoming is constantly arriving and I think life, we become all that we become through millimeters, millimeters of change. And so I reflect on how much my father's health has changed in my life. And those micro changes that have happened in the dynamics of my family have, have done worlds of movements and shifts within me where I now look at the world differently. There's a new urgency for relational investment, right? When you experience people die or you experience people enter crises and pain, uh, it, it reminds you of like what's really important. And I, I reflect back on just even like taking a seat off social media, right? And, you know, after feeling years of guilt about it, I'm learning that, that it's not a guilty thing to invest. Like, it's easy to think that this is it. It's easy to think that this is even what's real. But actually what's real isn't recorded, it isn't pre-recorded, not edited. It's the things that you casually will encounter in the store on like a Tuesday evening. Someone smiled at you and now you're having a conversation that is changing the trajectory of your life. You know, I remember meeting someone in Manchester. I moved to Manchester for about two years. I met this guy, his name's Seth. I love Seth. We were in church. He came from this state and came down to my church. I had like a five minute conversation with him. And in that five minute conversation, we already ascertained that like, yo, you're my brother for life, bro. It was crazy. And then he then said to me, hey, bro, whenever you're down, come to the US, we'll host you. And I said, bro, I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, lo and behold, I think this was around November, December. Literally in January, I flew to the US and I stayed in his home and of course, we're connected to the same communities. I'm not just saying just randomly going to fly a plane, light in a plane and like, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is like, I took a leap of faith where I flew all the way to Alabama, Hamilton. It's like a small town, a really, really small town in the US. The closest airport is two, two hours away. And so somebody drove two hours to pick me up from the airport and then drove two hours back, like just to get me and to take me back to then go drop me off at this person's house who I had a five minute conversation with before. Um, I say that to say, I think, Life is huge, life is big, there's joy to be found in there. And I think I spent a lot of my time grieving what I had lost, but now I'm on the journey to reclaim and rather to, to capture what I can still find. Um, and anonymity, I think is a blessing. If you're somebody who doesn't have an audience, enjoy the fact that your life isn't under scrutiny, but I will say to you, do everything you can to do all that you say that you will do because life is to be lived. Bible says better the day of death than the day of life. The day that you die, you want to lay down with a clear conscience, being able to say to yourself, I did all that I could. I loved all that I could. And I leave this world empty. That's my motivation. I want to leave this world empty. I want to leave this world full uh, because I can't, I can't carry anything else. Um, my friend's mother passed away recently and he said something to me that really struck a chord. He said to me, he said, 
said Josiah, you know, like when she passed away, we just, we just took a suitcase home, her bag and her phone, and we just put it on the side. And that's it. She couldn't take any of those things with her. And whatever we think is important right now may not be as important as spending time with people you love, enjoying what's outside, what's there. And I am tired of feeling guilty for doing that. Uh, because you know what? I am, uh, I'm just, I want to do that more of that. And so if you are looking for a few reasons to affirm that feeling should you have, and there's some people who generally feel like there is a pressure to have to create, to be in public. There isn't. There's a whole life, there's a whole system of life that you can thrive in without being visible in any way. And I would encourage people before you jump the gun to think that this life is easy or being in front of people is easy because of the opportunities you see. It's not. There is always a duality. There's always a gift and a curse. And every gift will come with a curse. And every curse will have a gift and everything. There's tension that we live called life. And in every way, find the joy where you are before um, trying to go to the other side. And, you know, of course, the grass is greener wherever you water it. So water your grass where you find it. But, but don't be afraid to adventure. I think I've lived a lot of my life in perpetual fear. I've paused my life for people who continued theirs. And that was cowardly of me. Um, and I think I've come into the point of courage where I won't stop doing that. And um, so, yeah, i looking forward to, to, to sharing more with you guys. And I'm super nervous and I'm not sure that this was even properly thought through. But hey, we're doing it. We're worrying less about how it's going to look and how it's going to sound, but we're going to do it. We're going to put it out there. So it's so good to see you guys again. I love you guys and I'll see you guys soon. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. I want to hear your stories. I want to hear um, the things that matter to you. And I'd love to hear your questions. So comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace and love, guys.